Hey guys, Jason here from showandrew.ca. Welcome, as promised. Uh, I know I've been going on about this for a while. Uh, I wanted to do a quick 15 minute uh, workout video uh, that focused more on doing basic Kabuto uh, techniques, okay? So I've chosen to go with the Sai first. So if you're joining us, please, uh, I hope you've got a, a set of Sai available to you because this, uh, this 15 minutes we're gonna spend is gonna be focusing on uh, a different uh, basic uh, Kihon uh, techniques that you can do uh, using the Sai um, as your weapon. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Ski. And re. Okay, just a few basic principles about the Sai, okay? Firstly, um, uh, the Sai, uh, from a size perspective, okay, if you've never used Sai before or if you're looking at buying a pair, okay, really what you're looking for is the Sai, and again, this is different for people within, you know, a spectrum, okay? Some people enjoy a, a longer Sai, some people enjoy a slightly short, shorter Sai, uh, but roughly speaking, the Sai should be about the length, okay? Uh, the tip of it should come down to around your elbow area, okay? You certainly don't want a Sai that's like sticking out that far from, you know, you'll get caught in your clothing, okay? And, and vice versa, you don't want a side that's too short because that really sort of like limits the range uh, that you can use the weapon effectively, okay? So um, you want to ensure that the wrap uh, on your side is in good condition, okay? Because there's a lot of torque happening when you're, when you're manipulating the weapon, there's, there's a lot of torque and twisting happening. Okay, if you've got a, a cheap uh, wrap uh, around the handle, that will quickly degrade and then you'll start, you know, getting into a situation where you're trying to manipulate the weapon and your fingers are actually getting tangled and caught up in the, in the, in the wrapping, okay? Um, uh, the spacing, okay, uh, between the main shaft, okay, and the tongs on the side, okay, that is gonna be a very personal preference, okay? Some people enjoy having a wider space, okay, and, and other people prefer having a much thinner, it depends really on the size of your hands, okay, so when you're looking for a pair of Sai, you want to try uh, manipulating more than one set and, and get a feel for where your hand feels most comfortable. I'd say for myself, uh, my, um, I'm pretty much like a medium, okay, I don't enjoy a Sai that's too tight around my thumb and around the pad of my thumb, but I also don't, don't enjoy a Sai that's too wide in, in its grip because uh, then I find I have a harder time manipulating the weapon um, uh, with any kind of accuracy, okay? So you really, it is very much about personal preference, okay? As far as actually using the weapon, okay, the Sai, uh, it, it's obviously not a, uh, it was never meant as a cutting weapon because there is no blade, okay? There is a point uh, on the tip of the Sai or there can be depending on the manufacturer uh, of the Sai, okay? But um, the Sai was never really intended uh, to use as sort of like a, a stabbing weapon. I'm not saying that it can't be used for that and, and certainly there are some uh, techniques and some of the kata that we use where there is this sort of stabbing technique that you do with the Sai. But really, the, the Sai was meant more for, for striking, okay? Uh, you know, you, you, you strike across, okay? You strike down, you strike in, inside to outside, outside to inside. And the idea is you want to get a maximum velocity uh, of the tip speed so that when you, when you hit, okay, you're hitting with the, the top, I'd say, inch or so of the tip of the Sai okay, in an ideal situation, okay, and that, that tip velocity allows you to either tear or even puncture, okay, bone and whatnot, okay, so it's a very effective weapon, but it's not necessarily meant as a stabbing weapon, and it certainly was never intended to be used as a cutting weapon, because again, there's no, there's no sharpened side, uh, there's no sharpened blade uh, on the side, okay, from defensive perspective, okay, the side uh, can also be used for blocking, okay, when you're blocking with the side, okay, you want to ensure that the Sai is actually not, it's not riding on the bottom of your forearm, okay, if you're blocking like this, because whatever you're blocking is still gonna make contact with your forearm, okay? Ideally, you wanna have it on the side like this, so when you're blocking, okay, if the weapon is coming in and hitting, it's hitting the, the steel of the weapon for the block, and it's not actually, you know, making contact with the skin, okay? So uh, these are just really basic principles, okay? So we're gonna do some really uh, basic workout exercises for about the next uh, 10 minutes, okay? Uh, let's, let's get started, okay? Uh, we're just gonna start off with the most basic technique and that is punching with the Sai, okay? So when you're punching with the Sai, okay, the biggest difference between doing a punch with a Sai and without a Sai is the position of the Hikite or the, or the hand that's doing the elbow. You wanna make sure that you're, when you're doing your elbow, your hand, your, your thumb is actually not facing or pointed outwards as it is with a punch. Like this is how my Hikite would be uh, when I'm punching, but the problem with doing that with the Sai is now you've tilted the, the points on the tongs 
to come back and actually stab you in the side, which, which I've seen it happen. I've done it myself, actually, <laughs> to be honest with you. And it's, it's painful, especially if you're doing a hikite with any sort of velocity, okay? So uh, to, to fix that problem, you want to turn your hand with your palm facing your body so that when you pull the side back into the hikite position, you're not going to get poked. You're not going to poke yourself with the tongs, okay? So, so we're going to be doing this punch, okay? We're just going to be coming back and forth, okay? Remembering to rotate that hand, okay, as it comes in, you're rotating the hand so the palm is facing your body and you're, you're pointing those tongs so they're not, gonna, they're not gonna impact your body. So let's just try a couple of these nice and light. Each, knee, sun, sheet, go, rook, each, each, coo, two. Good, and shake it out. Okay, let's speed it up a little bit. Now, if you've never done this before, please continue to do it at the, the walking pace that I was just demonstrating. Okay, you want to do this very lightly until you're sort of, sort of rotating that hand by uh, automatically without even thinking about it, okay? So here we go, right, uh, left hand out. Each, knee, sun, she, go, rock, sit, each, ku, ju, each, Ni, sun, shi, go, rook, hitch, hitch, ku, ju, hitch, ni, sun, shi, go, rook, sitch, hitch, ku, ju. Good. Shake it out. Okay. Right from this position, we're gonna we're gonna be in a pinan yui position. I'm gonna step forward. I'm gonna take the side. See, I'm bringing my hand across, and then from here, I'm almost, I'm letting my thumb, I'm, I'm almost letting go. This is doing this super, super slow motion here, but I mean, I'm letting go, and I'm, I'm kind of wrapping my hand around the handle, okay, and flipping it out into this position, and you can see I've got my thumb out here, okay, on the, on where the, uh, the main shaft intersects the two tongs on the side, okay, and I'm holding it the side like this, and then from here, I can actually flip it back into this position, this native position that we were in when we were doing the punch, okay? So you're bringing your hand across, letting go, but holding on with the thumb, the hook of the thumb, okay? And flipping the side out, and then flipping it back, okay? So it's gonna look like this. I come out, I come back. I come out with the other hand now, same idea. Okay, letting go, flipping the, the side out and then back. Okay, itch. Knee. Sun. She. Go. Rick. Sitch. Hutch. Ku. Ju. Good. Itch. Ni, sun, she, go, rook, sit, hitch, coos, ju, good, and relax, shake that out. Okay, you'll notice that as you continue to swing the side more and more, you're going to start to recognize the, the timing on doing the hand change. Okay, it comes naturally, you just have to keep manipulating the side and you'll get to feel right where you need to sort of let release to get the hand around. Okay, it's a, depending on how your side is weighted, it's gonna be a little bit different for everyone, but there's a sweet spot where you'll be able to do that changeover fairly quickly. Okay, this time we're gonna do the same exercise, but you're going to come down, up, and then up towards the head and back. Okay, so itch down, back, up, back, and back. Now the other hand, itch down, and up, sun down, itch down, itch down. Itch down. Down, it's down, 
down. Down. It's. It's. One more. It's. Knee. Good. Good. Shake it out. Okay. From here, you're actually going to come up on one leg. And the block that I was talking about earlier, where you're keeping the, the shaft of the weapon on the outside of the forearm. Okay, this is, this is in play here. Okay, so you're coming up. Okay, and then right from here, you're stepping down. Strike. And back. Okay? So we're going to step back with the right leg first. It's blocking. Stepping forward. Right? Doing that grab. Strike. Back. Back, and then stepping back with the left. Itch. Knee. Sun. She. Go. Rick. It's. It's. Juice. Juice. Good. Shake it out. Good. This time, we're going to come back on one leg. Okay, we're going to kind of bring it all together here, okay? So we're coming back on one leg. We're doing the block. Stepping low. Bringing it back. Stepping high. Bringing it back, okay? Here we go. Stepping back first with the left leg. So it's block. Strike low. Back, strike high, back, good. Now stepping back the right leg, each block. Stepping, strike low, up, okay, Stri strike high, up and back. Stepping back, each, strike low, strike high, good. Each, back, strike low, strike high, good. Each, block, strike low, strike high. It's block. Strike low. Strike high. Block. Strike low. Strike high. Yeah. Block. Strike low. Strike high. And we'll do one more on each side. Ready? It's strike low. Strike high. It's strike low. Strike high. Good. And back. Shake that out. Okay, this time, let's try a UI position. We're gonna punch like we did at the beginning of class. Okay, we're gonna punch, strike, punch. Okay, back. Ready, so you're punching with the right hand first. Stepping out with the right, punching right. It's punch, strike, back, punch. Same things, punching with the right. It's punch, strike, back, punch. Good. It's sick. Strike, punch, good, ready, it's punch, strike, punch, good, ready, punch, strike, punch, good, it's punch, strike, punch, good, it's punch, strike, punch, good, okay, now we're going to switch and do it on the other side, and this will be the last exercise, okay, here we go. So I'm stepping out with the left, punching left, striking left, bringing it back, punch. Okay, here we go. It's punch, strike, punch. It's punch. Good. It's strike, punch. Good. It's strike, punch. It's strike. Punch. Good. It's strike. Punch. It's strike. Punch. It's strike. Punch. Good. It's strike. Punch. And one more. Ready. It's strike. Punch. Good. Shake that out. Last exercise. Okay, we're gonna do 10 of these. This kind of gets both hands going at the same time. 
you're gonna be starting right from this position. Okay, hikite position. I'm gonna strike. And then right from here, I'm gonna do this. So I've, I've let go and both hands are kind of in the grab position here of the side. Okay. Boom, bend the elbows, grab, punch or a strike and back. So out, strike, in, back. Okay, let's try that. Ready. Itch, grab, strike. The elbows, bending the elbows is important because it allows you to get that thumb, then wrist around, okay, the, the, the handle of the side to flip it out. Ready, itch, bend, strike, back. Itch, bend, strike, back. Itch, strike. Itch, strike, back. Itch, strike, back. Itch, strike, back. It's strike back for three more. Here we go. It's strike back. Knee strike. Sun strike back. Good. Hands uh, left hand, other side in the left hand. Okay, guys, thanks for stopping by. That was a quick 15 minute exercise. If you can spend 15 minutes a day, if you've never done side and you spend 15 minutes a day you will quickly ramp up and be able to do these basic techniques. And then of course from there, you can do more complex, complex techniques. And there are several Kihon Sai, uh, basic Sai Kata that you can learn from many different styles. Uh, the thing about Kabuto weapons, uh, Kabuto Kata, is that they don't necessarily belong to any particular style. So you can pick one up, you can learn it, you can exercise these basic techniques to help you get a better grasp of how to do the, te the techniques properly. And hopefully that leads to a long, and fun uh, uh, career of practicing the, the Sai weapon as one, of the, as one of the Kabuto weapons in your arsenal, okay? So let's uh, quickly bow out, ski. And eight. Arigato gozaimasu. Until next time, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also check out our website at shonru.ca for lots of really cool information. And I look forward to working out with you again. Uh, until then, stay safe and have fun. Hey, thank you. Arigato.